Hello and welcome to the Gilshrat channel. My name is JB and today's video is going to begin a three-part mini-series all about how to connect your turnouts to your DCC system. In the first video I'm going to talk about turnouts and the different type of switch machines and the different wiring requirements that they have. Then in the second video I'm going to talk about how to use the DS64 Digitrax's accessory decoder and how you can use that to connect your turnout to your DCC system. I will also talk about how you can continue to use your selector switches from Kato and have both this and your accessory decoder controlling your turnout. Then in the last video I'm going to talk about the programming necessary to set this up. There's some software that you can use that makes it much easier and I'll talk about how to set up routes and how to give each turnout its own unique address on your DCC system. So stay tuned and let's check it out. Before I show you how I installed the stationary decoders to control my turnouts on my layout, I want to give you some background information about switch machines, the different types, how they work, and their slightly different wiring requirements. So before we begin, let's just take a quick look at a turnout and talk about the different parts of a turnout. So here you see we have the head rails, which is the part at the front of the switch where the train is coming in. We have our points, which is the part that physically moves back and forth and determines what direction the train will go. Uh, we have our switch machine, which is the mechanism that moves the points back and forth. We have the frog, which is where the rails come together. And then we have our through rails that keep going straight and our diverging rails that turn off from the main path of travel. In this particular video, we're going to be focusing mainly on the points and the switch machine. So I will be talking about these two parts of the switch multiple times. So I just want to make sure you know what they are and you understand when I talk about them. So first, let's talk about the first type of switch machine, the twin coil switch machine. If you ever had an Atlas turnout, which many of us HO scale and N scale modelers did, you're probably somewhat familiar with these. Twin coil switch machines were very popular, they were very common, they were fairly inexpensive to make, and they were really easy to use, and they were pretty durable. They do suck a lot of power though, and they are known for sometimes possibly damaging the points because they move very quickly and that fast jerky movement sometimes can damage your turnout after years and years of use. But overall they were very common and I think you know I know I used them when I was younger and uh, I'm pretty familiar with them. So let me explain how they work. So first we have our switch control unit. This could be an accessory decoder or it could just be a slide or toggle switch whoever you decide to let wire your layout. So here you can see there are three wires coming in. We have a side A, a common ground wire, and a side B wire. Next, inside the switch machine, you're going to have two solenoids. You're going to have solenoid A and solenoid B, and they're each going to be wired to a different part of the control unit. So side A will be connected to solenoid A, side B wire will be connected to solenoid B, and then the common ground will run from both solenoids to create two separate circuits. And in the center between the two solenoids you have a metal actuator. This part will move and then some linkage will connect it to the turnout points and this will physically move the points back and forth and decide a direction that the train will travel through the turnout. So let's say you want to throw this turnout you use your switch control and you send a short burst of power through side A. You activate solenoid A, it becomes powered, it turns into an electromagnet, and it pulls the metal actuator towards itself. This then moves the points on the turnout, and your turnout has now been set for going in a certain direction. Okay, and the metal actuator moves over to solenoid A. Next, if you take a look, you can see if you want to throw the switch the other direction, we then run power through side B. This turns on solenoid B, becomes electromagnet, and it pulls the metal actuator towards itself, towards side B. And then this moves the points, so now the switch is now set to go in the opposite direction of when it was set at solenoid A. 
Okay, so fairly straightforward. Uh, next one is the slow motion, sometimes called the servo switch machine. Uh, these are very popular among your more professional model railroaders, those that are trying to make their layouts look more realistic. Uh, instead of a quick jerky movement of the points, this actually creates a slow movement, just like on the real railroads. And they're also a little bit more kinder to the points, so they tend to last longer, cause less damage. So slow motion switch machines are becoming much more popular now with modelers, but they tend to be more expensive because they have more parts and they're a little bit more complicated. Uh, the probably the most popular and well-known slow motion switch machine in the United States is the Tortoise. So you might have seen these on somebody's layout or you may have heard of them. So slow motion switch machine is gonna work a little bit differently. So we have our switch control unit and here you'll see that we only have side A and side B connected to the switch machine. We're not going to be using a common ground. There's only one single circuit here. And we have our motor, our gearbox, and the actuator that will move and actually move the points on the turnout. So let's say you want to throw the turnout. So you're now going to send a, some power to the slow motion switch machine and this will be for an extended period of time. And by extended period of time, I mean maybe three, four seconds. So it's not just going to be a very short instant burst like with the twin coil. Uh, it'll be a little bit more time so that the switch machine has a chance to operate and slowly move the points. And here you can see the polarity of the power going to the motor. So this is a DC motor is very important. So in this particular example, you can see side A has been set to the negative polarity and side B has been set to the positive polarity. And here, in this case, it moves the motor in a clockwise direction and this moves the actuator to the right. If we want to throw the switch in the opposite direction, we switch the polarity that we send to the motor. So now side A becomes positive and side B becomes negative. The motor now turns counterclockwise and the actuator moves to the left. So this is how a slow motion switch machine works. Last, we're going to take a look at bipolar switch machines. And this is going to be the most important for this project in my videos because that is the type of switch machine that Kato uses in their Unitrack switches. It's also used by LGB and Aristocraft in their turnouts and switches. This switch machine is going to kind of be a little bit of both the slow motion and the twin coil in the way that it operates. As you can see, connected to the switch control unit, it only has two wires going to it. So just like the slow motion switch machine, polarity and DC current are going to be involved. So here you can see we only have wires going to side A and side B. We're not using the common ground. And on a bipolar switch machine, you will have two permanent magnets, one on each side of the switch machine. And they will be set up so that their polarities, the same ones, are facing each other. So if you know anything about magnetism, you know that opposites attract. So the south pole of this magnet will attract to the north pole of the magnet and vice versa. Here you can see that we have these magnets arranged so that the south poles are facing each other. So these two magnets are going to repel each other, but usually they're separated far enough away from each other that they're not going to interact with each other or have any issues. And in the center, you're going to have the solenoid actuator. Now in this example, I'm going to show you the solenoid is the thing that moves, but in some of these switch machines, the permanent magnets move. So it just depends on how the switch machine is set up and built. So here you can see, in order to throw the switch, we sent a short burst of DC power with side A being negative polarity and side B being positive. And this turned on an electromagnet in the solenoid. And this made it so that on the left side of the solenoid, it became a north pole and on the right side of the solenoid, it became a south pole. By doing this, the north and south pole between the permanent magnet on the left and the solenoid attracted to each other, 
and the two south poles between the permanent magnet on the right and the solenoid repelled each other. And these two forces pushed the solenoid over to the left. And then this moved the points on the turnout. If we want to throw the switch in the opposite direction, just like the slow motion machine, we simply reverse the polarity. So now side A is positive and side B is negative. This flips the poles on the electromagnet in the solenoid. So now the right side of the solenoid has a north pole and is attracted to the south pole of the permanent magnet on the right. And the south pole is now on the left side of the solenoid and it repels the south pole on the left permanent magnet. This, of course, works together to push the solenoid actuator to the right and throwing the turnout in the opposite direction, moving the points. So let's take a quick look at the Unitrack turnout and see what it looks like on the inside. So here's one that I took the cover off of, and this is all located underneath the track in the roadbed part of the piece of track. And you can see it looks a little bit complicated here, uh, that's also because there's some routing circuitry, so it routes power to the different diverging and through rails. But we're not going to worry about that right now. And you can see here's our permanent magnets. And in the center we have the solenoid. And if you notice, you'll see that the way this turnout is set up, it's actually the permanent magnets that move. The solenoid stays in one place, and the two permanent magnets actually move this entire black piece, you see a plastic piece, uh, and that moves the turnout back and forth. So, look ahead to my next videos. I hope you enjoyed and learned a little bit about how the different turnout machines, switch machines work. And so, in our, my next video, I'm going to cover installing the DS64 on my layout. So I'm actually going to show you how I wired it and the steps that were necessary to attach it and connect it to my turnouts, switch machines, and my switch controllers. Then after that, I'm hoping to make a video where I'm going to show you how to program those accessory decoders using JMRI. So if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on these upcoming videos that will probably be out within the next month or so. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you like this video or are interested in Japanese trains or trains in general, I invite you to please subscribe to this channel. You can also check out my website at gilshret.info. Additionally, I'm on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash gilshret and Twitter at twitter.com forward slash gilshret channel. And once again, thanks for watching.